Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Love from a Distance, where we turn from the chaos in the world into the love in our hearts. So today's episode is all about self-care. You know, you learn so much about yourself when you can just be still. The importance of sitting with your own feelings long enough to separate our thoughts and emotions from our true selves cannot be understated. I have known many who found it extremely difficult to practice stillness in this fast-paced society that we live in. But the silver lining in COVID-19 might just be that it's forced just about the entire globe into a moment of pause. What if this moment of collective stillness is our opportunity to develop a long lasting practice of self-care? Hmm, think about it. Well, today's self-care episode is part one of a two part series in partnership with My Black is Beautiful. And during this two part series, we will focus on what self-care is and how we can put it into practice to benefit ourselves, our loved ones and our world. And as we draw close to Mother's Day, this is the perfect time to encourage the givers of life to take better care of themselves. They have sacrificed for us, and we all must now encourage them to also pour their healing and love and strength into themselves. So we are pleased to announce that Love from a Distance will officially launch on Mother's Day. Yay! <laughs> you mean we haven't launched yet? <laughs> yeah. Right, and now with bells on and hearts open, uh, we will be honoring mothers around the world. And with that said, I honor a mother that is dear to me, my friend and co-host, Iyanla. <laughs> Hey, how are you? I'm good, but you do know Yamla is translated to mean great mother, right? Mm, you know I did not know it's that. It's not really a name, it's a title. When I went to Nigeria, I was given the title because it is, um, um, the mother is the one that takes care of the village. And then in my Lakota tradition, my name is Iya Iopiapi, which means the people recognize her voice. So I am the great mother whose people recognize her voice. That's what my name is. Oh, that is beautiful. <laughs> I would smile if that was the case for me as well, Iyanla. Well, no, but beautiful. people can't say Iyanla, so I'm never going to ask him to say Iyayopiapi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I what they would call me. How's your week it. been? Did you go out this week? I, you know, I, I've been really good. I've been here. I've been busy. Lots and lots of Zooming and writing and all kinds of things. But Iyanla. Yeah. Can we just talk about my need to go to the WAC Center? Listen, <laughs> Jurassic Park. Oh, my God. It's so traumatic. I, <laughs> I, I, yeah. Self-care, I need my nails did. And my eyebrows talk about Wolfman Jack, okay? <laughs> it's, it's terrible. You don't know how much you depend upon these things until you don't have them. Yeah, my nails are horrible. I, still I, went to, I took to the tweezer. By Monday, I took to the tweezer. I just had to get up in the tweezer and start tweezing because <laughs> otherwise my lashes would have been stuck in my eyebrows. That is that's <laughs> so painful, though. That is just so incredibly painful. You know, why you know, for years, that? for <laughs> years, I did my own nails and, and no, eyebrows. It's true. And that, it's you know, true. it's just convenient. It's but this it's right so here, this is a this is trauma. Spoiled. This is trauma. This is a problem. <laughs> <That's> a problem. <laughs> I said, I'm going to drive to Atlanta and get my nails done since they're open. Can you believe it? Oh Man, my mother. word! No, I can't believe it. Well, they have lines I, to get in. You know, I don't want to go there right now, but it's you know, I don't know how we how we get a handle on, on it if everyone isn't doing their part. But 
we breathe. Uh, that's another conversation. So we, well, <laughs> let's see who's doing their, their part. Texas, are you doing your part? Oh, somebody is over here talking about they all natural. Get off the thread. <laughs> Uh, Thanks for you. We love you. (laughs) Lakewood, Colorado, Houston, (laughs) Texas, South Carolina. I saw uh, the United Kingdom. I saw Trinidad and Tobago's Phillies here, Ohio, uh, New Jersey, Delaware, oh, LA, California, Oakland. So everybody seems to be in the house and none of them got their nails done. <laughs> or hair waxed, okay? Oh, all right. Please. I took to the tweezer. It wasn't so much the eyebrows, it was them other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, and, and when did those people show up in your life, right? I don't mind the people, it's the cousins that they bring with them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cayman Islands, okay. All right. Well, I am so glad uh, that we are doing the shout out. Um, for everyone in the house, because if you are in the house, then you're in for a treat. Uh, Today, we have got giveaways, giveaways, giveaways. Six audience members are going to get a self-care swag bag full of love. Beyond love, what self-care swag are you putting in the bag? Okay, well, I've put a sample of my body line, Masterpiece Body Products. So they're going to get two body washes and two body butters um, just to try out. So that's going to be in the swag bag. Yeah. And all of our, you know, products are made with African black soap, essential oils and oil, or essential oils and herbs so that they clean your energy as they clear your body. Okay, so I want some of that swag, all right? (laughs) I'm going to have to make sure I get some of that. That sounds scrumptious. Um, I will be giving away my book, The Little Book of Big Lies, that's in November. Um, So I'm happy about that. And My Black is Beautiful has included some awesome products as well, like samples of their golden milk-infused recovery mask. Uh, shampoo, conditioner, and a Tangle Slayer, which we all can use. Uh, They use teramic, uh, ginger, coconut milk, and other nutrient-rich ingredients in their products. They've also thrown in a couple of their coveted t-shirts that are always a hit at Essence Fest. So we going to get Uppy getting a bag? Yeah, I'm, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It sounds like a bag we should have as well, Eon. <laughs> I think so. Come on, my black is beautiful. I need a bag. I yes. always have an essence. Um, and just so you know, to be automatically entered into the self-care swag bag drawing, you you um, must follow at LFAD podcast where you will get all of the details that you need. So again, that's at LFAD podcast, and you'll be able to get all of the details on how you can automatically be entered into the drawing. Where do they, we're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I don't know, you know, when you say follow, yeah, I don't so, know. Yeah, yeah. So at LA, LFAD podcast, that is our uh, Instagram. Okay, uh, Instagram. And, okay. Yeah, that's our Instagram. And you could also, I would imagine go to the website, which is www.lovefromadistance.info. I'm sure that in both of those places, they should be able to get the information. And if that wasn't the case, by time this show is over, oh, they'll let they, you know. <laughs> they will. <laughs> it will be oh, right. Case, right? right. <laughs> People be writing me for all kind of stuff. Yes, like, yes, yes. <laughs> now, now for all of you who don't win because there's a lot of you on um on the feed um if you don't win a bag don't worry because i've got you covered in celebration of our launch which is on mother's day and i'll tell you more about that i am gifting everyone in the audience today with a free inner fitness workout i'll be blasting out details via newsletter uh, to all of you after the show so like i said everybody gets something all right okay Fantastic. Well, Iyanla, 
Yes. It's that time. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Me too. Me too. Your sister is awesome. She is yes. off the Yes, chain. yes. So uh, let me introduce our dear and worthy guest for today. Now, we call her dear and worthy because actually we all are dear and worthy, right? So uh, our dear and worthy guest has been featured on Forbes, MTV, Huffington Post, Black Enterprise, Teen Vogue, Essence, and serves as resident psychologist uh, on 4 O, the Oprah Magazine. Uh, she is a licensed psychologist, speaker, and media personality on her wildly popular mental health podcast, Therapy for Black oh, Girls. Black Girls, which, yes. Yes, which, which is a wonderful show. I've actually had the honor of being on it. Uh, she delights in using pop culture to illustrate psychological concepts. She's even done some deep dives into the character I play on Queen Sugar, Aunt Vi. Yeah. So it is my pleasure to reconnect with and my honor to welcome Dr. Joy Harden Bradford. Hi, Dr. From Joy. The Hello. Thank you both so much for having me. Oh, thank you for being. How come she was on your show? I've been on your show. And I, was... <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. Isn't it? Now, Dr. Joy, you owe me. You owe me because now you are going to have on your I show you John Levanta. <laughs> in fact, I think. In fact, I think I should get something from both of you. I think it, a finder's fee is only appropriate. <laughs> yes, I love your podcast. It is so wonderful. I love the piece that you did um, when. Um, oh my lord, Kobe, not, yeah, Kobe Bryant when Kobe died. Mm, mm -hmm. you know, um, I didn't hear when Tina was on there because I would have wrote you and say hi, chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, we're so glad, so glad to have you here tonight because Thank you. we um you know the the stress is real. <laughs> the Very stress is real. And I I think the first week when we were talking, I'm almost as concerned about the P T uh S D. You know, what is this gonna be like afterwards? Mm -hmm. Because from the letters and the and the emails and the that I'm getting from people, it's, it's real. Yeah. It, it's, so, it's very real. From a psychological perspective, I do it from a spiritual perspective. But when you talk about self-care, Dr. Joy, what are you talking about? What do you... Yeah. Yeah. So we are really talking about everything that we need to do to sustain ourselves, right? And so I know, you know, we joke about like nails and all of that stuff. Of course, that stuff is important, right? Because we like to feel good about ourselves. Um, but also, we are talking about things like setting healthy boundaries with people in our lives. We're talking about um, paying attention to our physical activity, paying attention to the kinds of things that we're eating, um, paying attention to how and why we're using social media. So we're really talking about all of the things that go into helping us to be able to sustain ourselves so that we can continue to show up for ourselves and for those that we love. You know what I found very interesting, and, and it's so funny that you said it, because I find very interesting, I've gotten a lot of letters, I'm going to send them over to you, <laughs> <laughs> how people's boundaries are being violated in the stay home order. Oh, Even, absolutely. Talk, talk about, first of all, tell people what a boundary is, because so many people don't really understand it. Uh, what is a boundary? Yeah, so if you think about it, um, and I like to use this analogy because it's really helpful. So if you think about if you live in a house and you have a neighbor, a fence is a very clear representation of a boundary, right? It is where your, your yard ends and where your neighbor's yard begins. And so everything that you do within the confines of your fence is to take care of your home and everything that happens in your neighbor's yard is whatever is their business, right? Um, and so when we're talking about boundaries, we are talking about 
not literals, of course, um, fences, but we're talking about the ways in which we protect ourselves, the ways we protect our energy, the ways we protect our mental health, and all that is encompassed with that. And so people's boundaries are really being tested right now because, uh, well, a lot of different reasons, but, uh, but people feel like, oh, everybody's just at home, right? So that means you're available to me all the time. All the that time. means if I want to talk to you and, you know, talk for two and three hours, you are free because we're not working when of course a lot of us are um and so i think even if people struggle with boundary setting before they're really really struggling with it now because of everything related to sheltering in place so what for those people because you know and particularly for us and a lot of us have lived pre-covid as people mm -hmm. pleasers as yes. rescuers as super women which is one of the reasons we haven't taken care of ourselves so from, again, from your professional place, Dr. Joy, what is the first step that somebody who's lived like that needs to take to create healthy boundaries for self-care? What is the first step? Yes. So I think the first step is recognizing where those boundaries kind of fall apart for you. And for a lot of us, it could be difficulty setting boundaries across various relationships. But for some of us, it is in very specific relationships. So it could be in the relationship with your parents or in the relationship with your partner or in relationships with your friends. And so I think you want to start with an assessment of what your boundaries look like. And one of the clear signs that there are some boundary violations happening is if you see this person's phone number pop up on your phone and you're like, Oh, what do they want now? <laughs> right? Boundary. <That's> <laughs> it's a very clear sign that there has been some communication that has not been had. Right? right. That they, you have likely become resentful. You've likely, um, you know, probably acting out maybe passive aggressively. Like that is a very clear indication for you. I think that there's something going on there, and that this relationship needs to be re-examined. Yeah. So. So they have to first assess themselves. Now, mm -hmm. this is another good thing around self-care because a lot of people right now are facing major fears, mm -hmm. major fears. And drawing your line in the sand and daring somebody to cross it is a fear people have. Absolutely. You know, they, they, speaking your needs, speaking your yes. truth. Tell me why, tell us why that is such an important part of self-care. Yeah, it, it's really important because if you are not maintaining yourself and your boundaries, then there is no you to really show up in these relationships, right? And so I think a lot of times what happens is that we are so afraid to have these conversations, to just give voice to what we really need, because we're afraid that people are actually going to leave us. A lot of us have really deep-seated issues of abandonment for lots of different reasons. And so we feel like if we say what we need, if we are too much, so to speak, right? It will cause tension in the relationship and the relationship will eventually dissolve. But the truth of the matter is that when we are brave enough and vulnerable enough to show up and ask for what we need, usually people will rise to the occasion and the relationship becomes stronger. But yes. if you never ask for it, then you continue in these relationships where you're not really happy and then only the other person's needs are getting met and not yours. Boundaries is a part of self-care. Asking for what you need is mm -hmm. a part of self-care. Because I always say, if you don't ask for what you need, the need gets bigger. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you get into bad behavior. Right. What else? When we're talking about self-care right now in this thing, what else? Boundaries, asking for what you need. What else, Dr. Joy? I also think it is really important to make sure that we're carving out some alone time. Um, so we've already talked about how we as women usually are showing up in lots of different ways, right? And so I think it's important for us to remember that our like levels of stress are even higher than they typically are when we're already running around, right? And now we're, you know, lots of us are nervous about this global pandemic and what's going to happen and am I safe, right? And so we are operating at an even lower level than we usually are. And a lot of us are already very close to E, right? right. Um, and so I think it is important for us to make sure that we are carving out some very physical time for ourselves um, to kind of be alone with our thoughts, to regroup, to have some time to scroll on Instagram if we want. Um, it's, it's really important that you are actually physically taking away time from everybody else in your house. That may mean hiding away in the bathroom if you can. Um, if you have access to a car, 
going there and closing the door or taking a drive, you know, if you're able to take a drive safely without, you know, having to interact with anyone else, all of that can be really helpful in giving you just some space to be yourself and to have you to get you some clarity in this kind of a situation. Listen, I live alone and I take me time. I get, exactly, exactly. I get in the car and I just drive and then I live in the country. So I want to oh. see the trees and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I be by myself, by myself. <laughs> you know, Dr. Dr. Joy, in the, you, you actually are talking about how to manage inside of the house. I, I know that you were talking about when you see that person's name show up on your phone. But what if that feeling that you're having is with the person who is actually in the house with you? Yes. <laughs> yes. That is such a great question, Tina. Such a great question. So I think that that means that it's probably a very long overdue conversation that needs to be had with this person, right? Um, so it is really important, especially if we're talking about like in a partnership. So I think it's very telling that we're already seeing some numbers coming from Wuhan in terms of an increase in divorce rates, yes. right? And so, you know, people I think are learning a lot in good ways and not so good ways about themselves and their partners uh, while we're sheltering in place. And so it is kind of forcing some very difficult conversations, but that doesn't mean it has to be terrible, right? But it might be difficult just because it might be something that you've been avoiding for some time. And so I think now better than any other time is a great time to say, hey, there's something that's been on my mind. I'm wondering if we can carve out some time to talk about it and actually being intentional about setting the time to do that. Um, not necessarily springing it on them because you want to be in a space where you can actually have the conversation, but making a schedule for when we're gonna come back together to talk about whatever it is that's been on your mind and how you're being impacted. I see something in the thread I wanna raise with you because I get a lot, I get this every single day where somebody in the thread said, I'm very, depressed mm -hmm. let's talk about that because mm -hmm. depression yeah. domestic violence mm -hmm. and even the other day i was reading something I, I had to put it down because the children make me cry oh, yeah, child yeah. abuse but yeah, let's yeah. talk about this depression yeah because people are really experiencing that what what do yeah. you need them to know yeah. So, I mean, you know, I think it's important to recognize that, you know, lots of people struggled with depression and depressive symptoms even before this. And so when you think about us being cut off from our support systems in a lot of ways, um, people maybe not able to go to the gym and engage in physical activity in the ways that they did. Um, work is different. And so lots of the things that maybe gave us purpose and gave us drive are no longer there. And so it, it to me, it is a very expected um, reaction to what we're living in right now. And yeah. so I think it is really important for people who are struggling with depressive symptoms to make sure that they are reaching out. Um, yeah. So that could be to a loved one, but also to a therapist. Um, you know, so for a lot of people who have not had therapy, I think that they are recognizing that the additional support of a therapist and having somebody there to process their feeling with, particularly right now, is very helpful for them. Um, mm -hmm. And it's important to know that therapists are still working. So we're seeing clients virtually through things like Skype and Zoom and HIPAA compliant uh, you know, platforms, but also telephone sessions. So don't think that people are not still there to help you because we definitely are. Um, it's also important, I think, for people to make themselves lists of things that they have enjoyed, um, maybe when they weren't depressed. So are there particular songs that you really like listening to, particular books? Like make yourself lists of these things so that when you find that your mood is more depressed, then you can reach for these things. Now, they still might not feel as exciting and pleasurable as they did before, but it is still a step in the right direction. Um, and some physical activity can be really helpful. Um, so I have been telling people, I have been dancing along with Debbie Allen on Instagram, mm -hmm. um, which I think is a very cool and different kind of way to make sure that your body is moving, right? So you don't have to think about it just in terms of a 30 minute high impact workout, but can you take a walk around your neighborhood? Um, are you able to kind of be outside and just have a little sunshine depending on where you live in the country? All of those things I think can be really important in helping to impact your mood. And if for whatever reason you don't have funds or money, you can't get a therapist, you don't have a therapist, I think it's the national, it's naming, National Association of Mental something. Um, mm -hmm. We'll put it back in the thread. 
Yeah. Um, they will give you real time support because some people, you know, like we know how disproportionately people of color have been impacted. Mm -hmm. They don't have right. health insurance. They don't, they're not getting them their monies yet. Uh, and so, but there, there is, a, is help for that. Same mm -hmm. thing I would say, because that's self-care reaching yes. out when you know you need help sitting around just saying all by yourself saying you're depressed is not going to help you domestic violence yeah mm -hmm. yeah what yeah. what do we do for that because you can't go to the shelter right right yeah unfortunately a lot of the shelters are closed to people to new people right people who were already there able to stay there um but some of the hotlines are still working so i think the national association or the National Domestic Violence Hotline is still working. Um, some of your local resources may be able to do a little bit more um, in your local area. But I also think that it is incumbent upon people who are not in a domestically violent relationship to make sure that we're looking out for one another. Um, so even though you may not be able to go over to someone's home, I think it's also helpful. Um, I think it can be helpful to call and let people know that you're thinking about them um and you know ask if there's anything to if that you can do for them even if you're not able to kind of go over and get them i think people you know a lot of times domestic violence escalates because people are isolated from their support systems yeah, yeah. and so the more that you can stay connected to these people i think it can really go a long way yeah so, so if people are wanting to engage a therapist at this point how do they find a reputable one mm-hmm yeah, so we have a therapist directory on our website at therapyforblackgirls.com, um, and you can find therapists across the country and in Canada. Um, so if you're looking for a therapist there, then that could definitely be a place to start. There's also a, a directory called the Open Path Collective, so people who are looking for a sliding scale, um, I believe you can see a therapist there for between $30 and $50. Um, so you can also look there to look for someone in your state. Um, Psychology Today is another one. There's another called Melanin and Mental Health. So there are lots of different um, therapist directories, but you can also just Google your city um, and therapist and whatever your concern is. So California Therapist for Anxiety, and you'll likely find a list of therapists that will pop up. Yeah, I put together a resource list also. One of the things that I encourage people to do every day, just in terms of self-care, um, is journal, mm. journal writing yeah. as a way to dump the brain. Can you talk to us about that and why, if that's important, why it's important? Absolutely. Yeah. Journaling is one of my favorite things also and something that I recommend to clients quite often um, because it can give you a place to just be alone with your thoughts. Um, and so, you know, I know Tina mentioned this kind of as we were opening the show that for a lot of us, that is something that we haven't had to do before. Right. And so now in a lot of ways, we're kind of being forced to be alone with our thoughts. And for a lot of people, that can be really scary. Um, yeah. So journaling can give you a very organized kind of way in a specific place to kind of just dump your thoughts. Um, and you don't have to be structured, right? So there's nobody grading your journal. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect sentences. You can write in bullets, you can draw. Um, and I think another really good practice, especially again, for people who struggle with depression and anxiety, gratitude journaling can be really helpful. Um, so if you can share three things that you see every morning or as you're going to bed in the evening, three things that you have been grateful for, it can really help to kind of refocus some of that energy um it can again help with your mood you 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 easy you said three i say 40. <laughs> <laughs> well you gratitude. don't want to overwhelm as a starting place you can't have too much gratitude that's just a, <laughs> i do gratitude i do forgiveness here's here's another thing i wanted to talk to you about just in terms of self-care because again i know you get it i get it meet the late night snacking and the over oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Please not the door. Don't, don't tell me that this is a late night snacker. <laughs> Listen, I was accosted the other day. I was accosted by the nacho chips. <laughs> <laughs> Every 10 minutes, I'm in there curling with the refrigerator door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what so, do you know, people are really concerned about overeating and, yeah. and that kind of, of thing. Uh, I didn't know I was a late night snacker because I was usually asleep at night. Uh huh. Uh huh. But since I'm napping in the day, I'm up at night. Up at night. What do we yeah. do? 
What's us? Yeah, so I think it's, Im it's important to to recognize like how all of our patterns are a little off right now, right? So you know, bedtimes aren't the same times that they used to. We may be waking up a little later, um, and so it's important to know that it's coming from somewhere, right? And so I think it's really helpful to make sure that we're being kind and gentle with ourselves and not shaming ourselves or, you know, being super critical of ourselves because the need to snack is you trying to comfort yourself, right? Like you're feeling stressed, you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling whatever. Um, and so you're trying to soothe yourself with snacking and, and those kinds of things. And so I think when you are kind of knowing that you're reaching out for your snacks, it can be helpful to kind of just slow the process down and check in with yourself. Like, hey, what am I feeling right now? Like before I reach for this bag of chips, what was going on for me? Did I read something particularly troubling on Instagram? Was I watching the news? Like, is there something that kind of heightened my emotions? And then sometimes that can help you to kind of take a step back. Maybe that's when you journal. Um, maybe that's when you do something else to kind of distract yourself. But also thinking about like, are you missing meals now, right? Because the system is the whole, you know, schedule is so thrown off. You may recognize like, oh, it's 10 o'clock and I never ate, right? And so your body is telling you I need something. And so maybe it's just easy to grab a bag of chips. So also paying attention to your schedule and making sure that you're still eating and snacking throughout the day like you maybe would before um, is also going to be key on cutting down on some of that like late night craving kind of thing. Well, I, I don't know why the, well, I don't have potato chips, but I did have the, not the tortilla chips. Uh-huh. Why they was in here that those things are evil. <laughs> <laughs> they evil. I had to get them out. It wasn't so much the chips as the cheese. Oh, I my, the next day my eyes was running. So I've been, I'm healed. So let's uh -huh. just say boundaries, asking for what you want, reaching out if you are depressed or you know that you, you need help. Um, if you are in a dangerous or volatile situation, stay connected to people. Mm -hmm. um, no shaming ourselves for the snacking, but mm -hmm. to get clear about what, what we're feeling when we're snacking. Right. Journaling, to dump the brain and spend time with ourselves. Mm -hmm. Keep the body moving so yeah. that we have things. And, um, uh, there was one more. Uh, I, well, I did pretty good though, right? You did. You oh, did. Not the whole broad in the group. <laughs> she was letting us know how brilliant that brain is. There's no way I could have. I'm a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> kindergarten teacher. I got to <laughs> summarize. <laughs> repeat, repeat. Let's talk about post traumatic stress disorder. How do we prepare to get out of this? Because mm -hmm. coming out of this is going to be worse than being in it. Yeah, and, and I well, think and as I a field... I use that as our first question and then go into the rest of the questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Q&A. So that would be fantastic if, if you would answer that. That's a... Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think as a field, we're kind of bracing ourselves for that. Um, and I think particularly for our healthcare professionals, um, so the, the levels and depths of what they are seeing that we are all not privy to, I think is going to be incredibly traumatic. Um, and so I think, again, getting connected to a provider right now could be really helpful so that when we are on the other side of this, you already have a relationship and you can continue to do hopefully some of that great work that you've already been doing. Um, also making sure that you are focused on the present moment and not thinking too far ahead. Um, you know, so when we try to think about like, oh, what is things, what are things going to be like 18 months down the line, then you start spiraling, right? Like what if, what if, what if? Um, but when you bring it back to like, okay, what can I do in this hour? What am I in control of right now? Then that can help you to, to uh, defray some of all of that spiraling. Um, so I think making sure that you're staying connected to the present moment and then connecting to a provider, um, if you, especially if you're somebody who has had um, past traumas, it is very likely that everything that's happening now could be kicking up some of that stuff again. And so getting connected to a therapist to work on some of that stuff, as well as in preparing for what happens when we are kind of reopening, I think is gonna be key. I work with people every morning and I'm teaching them a variety of breathing techniques. Mm -hmm. I'm giving them readings and, and, and foundational stuff so that when we get out there, they'll have something to, to hold on yeah. to. Yeah. yeah. So yes. we've got some questions coming in for you, Dr. Joy, because we just yeah. love you. And we, <laughs> so we want to get, we want to work you. It says <laughs> at this point, uh, oh no. 
What is the most impactful way to stress to employees that they have a responsibility to be safe while they are not at work so that they don't bring the virus to their fellow employees and people? Again, self-care. But that's mm -hmm. how do yeah, you and I there has been a variety of this question kind of coming up in lots of different conversations I've been having. So people um, who are stressed about their friends not taking it as seriously or people who are stressed about their partner not taking it as seriously. And I think that it's, again, important for us to remember that ultimately the only thing that we have control over is ourselves and maybe little ones if we have them, right? Um, you know, so I think telling your coworkers about the importance of wearing a mask and staying six feet apart from people and washing your hands. Like, I think sharing that information just to make sure that people have it is, is great. But ultimately, there's nothing that you can do. You're not going to be able to follow around all of your coworkers and make sure they're doing the right thing, right? You have to just trust that you have shared the information and then trust that you are doing everything that you can do to keep yourself safe. But ultimately, it's out of your hands um, once you share it with a coworker the things they need to do. Well, I, I'll spray them because I made me <laughs> spray the man in the store. He got too close. I sprayed him. I sure did. And he said, what is that? I said, don't worry. I'll keep you clean. So he said, oh, could you do my back? <laughs> Here's another question for you, uh, Dr. Joy. This is a really juicy one. Okay. And this question says, how do you deal with the person or situation when they get angry or upset or become disrespectful when you say to them, I want to spend more time with myself. I want to practice self-care. And they mm -hmm. go into upset. What do you do mm -hmm. then? Yeah, I think that that lets you know that you're on the right track. Honestly, <laughs> it, probably, it probably lets you know that, again, this conversation is likely way overdue, right? So we are not responsible for the ways that anyone reacts to us setting the boundary. We're only responsible for us setting the boundary and holding the boundary. Um, and so someone getting upset, I think you really have to stop and think about, does this person really have my best interest at heart? if me saying I need some time to myself upsets them, right? Like me saying that I need to take care of myself for this 30 minutes or whatever should not be upsetting to someone who really has your best interests at heart. Um, so I think that information is telling, uh, but I don't think that there's anything that you need to do besides continuing to make yourself a priority. Yeah. Somebody asked here, what about digital boundaries? Yeah. You know, like mm. people text you all the time and the group text and the group, <laughs> how do you, Please, how do you? <laughs> yes, so it's so funny. I actually just sent out a, um, a, an article to my newsletter today about how to remove yourself from group chats. Yes. Because again, I think people's stress levels are so high that the things we used to have a tolerance for, we just don't have it anymore, right? We just can't take it all that constant notification and stuff like that. Um, so I think removing yourself from group chats if you feel like you need to, turning on your do not disturb. So between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., I'm not available. My phone is not going off, all of those kinds of things that we have. Um, but again, having conversations with people. So if there's somebody who is repeatedly kind of breaking the boundary, you know, I think it's important to remind them like, hey, I understand you may want to chat, but I'm not available until after five o'clock. Um, and just letting people know what your boundaries are. I've also been encouraging people for, um, if you have repeated offenders in your home who are kind of continuing to step over boundaries, right. making your, your schedule public. So maybe you put a copy on your fridge that says, these are my work hours and these are the hours where I'm going to be available, um, could be really helpful in kind of helping people to understand when you are gonna be available to chat. And then they have to adhere to it. You know, once yes. you set the boundary, you have to adhere to it. You have to adhere to it and hold it up. Well, you know, once you draw your line, and this is the piece about boundaries that I think people forget. Once you draw your line in the sand and somebody crosses it, there has to be a consequence. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you just back up and draw the line again. Right. But you got to announce what the consequence is. Mm -hmm. Because if there's no consequence, they'll continue. They will continue. To engage in the, in the bad behavior. You have to be willing to make a consequence. Yeah, you know, um, if you're trying to ask a question, look at the bottom of the screen and put the question there because if you're putting it in the chat, we can't catch it. If that thing moves so fast, I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good question, but it's, I don't know, it's out in the ethos now. So I will just... It's coming, it's coming um, back to you all about journaling. 
Yeah. Is it healthy to journal negative thoughts? Yeah. Well, go ahead, Dr. Joy. You need- <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. So I know a lot of people do feel like that, like I'm not going to write this down because I'm not going to give energy to it, so to speak. But it really is just a releasing of your thoughts. Um, and you want to get into not so much judging your emotions and your thoughts, but just allowing them to exist. Right. So I think we kind of get caught up sometimes when we're trying to say this is a good thought or this is a bad thought. This is a good emotion or a bad emotion. They are. They just exist. Right. Yeah. Um, and so allowing yourself to just have space to write down whatever is coming up for you, I think, can be good. And it comes up to come out. There's more room mm-hmm. out, out here than in there. Yeah. So I think that that's a good thing. said is so important, even if you're just saying it to yourself. Just yeah. what you said is important. And, and so many of us, I think suffer from not giving ourselves permission to even know our truth. Mm-hmm. Forget speak it. <laughs> we won't even let ourselves yeah. know it because of the, you know, can't talk, think like that about your mama, or you can't say that about your children. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but I, I think that that's, it's important that we give ourselves permission. Um, a lot of people, and this is not a question, but I want you to speak to it in terms of self-care. A lot of people, Dr. Joy, they don't like being with themselves. They don't want to <laughs> do internal investigation or self-reflection mm-hmm. or self any of that. So mm-hmm. they become very resistant. I think those are some of the people in the group text. <laughs> mm. What is that about? Help mm-hmm. folk understand what is that about so they can break that barrier and, and, and do some work. Yeah, it could be really a lot of different things, Um, you know, so a lot of it likely comes from some childhood stuff. Um, So maybe you have been told that your thoughts don't matter, that you don't matter. Um, Maybe you've been told that you're too much or not enough. Um, So there are a lot of reasons why people don't want to do some of that introspective work. But I think, again, you know, going back to the therapy piece, doing it in conjunction with a therapist who is kind of creating a safe space for you to explore some of these things can make that whole process a lot less scary. Um, You know, because maybe when you're trying to do the digging yourself, you feel overwhelmed, you feel flooded by all of this stuff, right? But when you're working with a therapist, they're going to help you to regulate that. They're going to help you to take one piece of it and let's deal with this as opposed to dealing with everything at the same time. So I think having a support person to really help you through that process is going to be helpful. And not, and also understanding that there are pieces of all of us that we're not really proud of, right? Um, so you can't be afraid to like learn some things about yourself because you feel like you'd be embarrassed by it or whatever. We're human, we're flawed, none of us are going to be perfect. And so learning more about yourself allows you to do something about it as opposed to kind of just, I'm going to leave that un- unknown and not know that thing about myself. Because it's likely showing up in your relationships and in other ways anyway, right? So the more that you know about yourself and why this part of you exists, the more power you have to do something about it. Now, Dr. Jewett, let me ask you this question, because you are a psychologist. Is that accurate? Correct. What is the distinction, help people, I mean, I know, but I want you to speak it, the Mm -hmm. distinction between a psychologist, a psychiatrist, Mm -hmm. and then you know you got your MSWs, your licensed Mm -hmm. clinical social worker. Okay, so Mm -hmm. let's start with a psych psychiatrist because I think a lot of times particularly for people of color when we talk about therapy because mm-hmm. we don't know the distinctions mm-hmm. we think all of y'all are psychiatrists and I'm crazy and I can't admit I'm crazy so I'm not coming to you mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. psychiatrists what do they deal with Psychiatrists have medical training. So these are people who have gone to medical school, additional years of training, and they can write prescriptions for medication. Um, So usually you would be talking with a psychiatrist if you're feeling like you need medication to help with your concerns. Some psychiatrists do therapy, but more often you are going to a psychiatrist um, for medication. Okay. And they also deal with emotional, psychological balances that are caused through physiology, no? Sometimes? 
Right. Yeah. So it, it really is just about a difference in treatment. So psychiatrists are going to be treating you um, usually using a medical model. So a lot of times they will use medication as the intervention, um, but also will work with you and your psychologist or your therapist. Right. Um, you know, so they may be kind of managing the medication piece and then your therapist, which a psychologist is one, um, would be doing the talk therapy with you. So we would be talking with you likely every week about what's been going on asking you some questions about your history. Um, and the other kind of professionals you might hear about, licensed clinical social workers, um, licensed marriage and family therapists, licensed professional counselors, those are also people who are able to do talk therapy. The real difference is in um, the amount of time people have gone to school and maybe some additional training. Um, so psychologists are also the only ones who can do any kind of psychological testing. Um, right. So if you're needing testing for ADHD or a learning disability, um, or if you're having weight loss surgery or something like that, psychologists are the only ones who can do that kind of testing, but they do therapy just like the other professionals that I mentioned as well. Okay. And please, everybody, I am a coach. I am not a therapist. And a coach, you got to come to me with a vision. Because a lot of times people think what I do is therapy, and it absolutely mm -hmm. is not. I think the right. combination of me being a minister and a coach, you know, I can do things that maybe other coaches don't do. But coaches really support you into moving into your vision and, and, and attaining success, which means you either have a vision or you're trying to create a vision. So when it comes to depression and suicide and, and those things, Call Dr. Joy. She can help you. I can't help you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, we're coming close to um, the time that we have to say goodbye, but there's a question here that I'd love to put on the floor. Um, this person says that I'm an essential worker, and the night before I have to work, I can't sleep and get sick. Do you have any tips I can use? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I've been hearing this kind of thing um, from other people who are continuing to have to work. Um, and so I think it could be really helpful to try to practice some kinds of mindfulness things. Um, so there are lots of different apps that are helpful for this. So there's an app called Calm, um, C-A-L-M is a good one. Um, there's also a good one called Insight Timer. Yes. Um, that allows you to listen to different meditations and things to try to just slow the mind down and help you to kind of engage with sleep. Um, if it's possible, it would probably also be helpful for you to talk with a therapist. Um, just again, so that you have a place to share, I'm sure, everything that you're afraid about and the stresses that you're feeling and to get some additional support. Um, so I would re recommend working with a therapist if you can as well. Can I just offer too that... Um... I, I've been telling people this for weeks. If you go on YouTube, you can find the Solfeggio Binaural Beats, S-O-L-F-E-G-G-I-O. -G -G and this is music that is composed in a specific way using a specific rhythm of music that, that creates a subliminal energy for you. They have one for healing. They have one for sleep. They have one to heal the negative energy in your in your environment. And I, you know, I use them all of the time just because of the way that they're composed. So Feggio, S-O-L-F-E-G-G-I-O. -G -G and then here's a shameless plug. I have an app and mm -hmm. I'll coach you every morning. Yes, the yeah. Awakenings app for either the iPhone. And so I know mine is a familiar voice and I give you something to work with and work through every day. The, wake, the app is called Awakenings and you can get it for free at your uh, iTunes store or your uh, Google Play. Or just join me on Facebook every morning at 10 o'clock. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. So, uh, Dr. Joy, um, we would love for you to share any parting thoughts that you might have with our audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so once again, just thank y'all for allowing me to be here, for creating this space for us to have these kinds of conversations, I think are really, really helpful. i just like to remind everyone that we are all doing the best that we can in this, price, this process. Um, this is a crisis that, unlike any that in most of us have ever experienced. So be kind and gentle with yourself and extend that grace to others in your life as well. Yeah. 
Thank you, Dr. Joy. Thank I so you. Appreciate you. you. Reach out to you again. Will you come back and visit us? Absolutely. Anytime. <laughs> I Thank love you, Dr. It. Joy. And thank you for thank the you. really good work that you're doing with the youngins. I just love <laughs> what you're doing with the youngins. I, I thank mean, you. So much. Black girl uh, therapy is it's wonderful. So yeah. Yeah, thank uh, you. We're thank making you so a difference much. in the world. So thank yeah. you for that. So I, I don't want her to go. No. <laughs> isn't that the good part about this opportunity that we have to talk about such important things? You know, um, when people talk about self-care, they usually talk about going to the spa, you know, or giving themselves a private day with themselves. And all of that is really important. Yeah. But you, Dr. Joy and and it just and everything that you say it's so important for us to recognize that a deeper level of self care is calling all of us for yes. us to be able to be with ourselves with ourselves by ourselves in a way that lets us sort through the difficulties of our life. So if you don't have some sort of inner fitness practice, there's a number of ones that have just been identified from yeah. journaling to actually uh, having a relationship with a therapist to one of those apps that they're talking about, to meditation, to mindfulness. All of these are strategies that one can employ that will allow them to begin to be in relationship with self in a way that lets them begin to take charge of their reactionary minds and their fears. But you know what, Tina? W when we talk about self, I think it's important to understand there's the mind, that's the mental self. Yeah. Then there's the heart or the emotional self. Yeah. Then there's the body, which is the physical self. And then there's the spirit, which is the spiritual self. Okay. And I think when we do the hair and the nails and the massage and the spa, we're doing either body and mind, but we can't forget about the heart and okay. the spirit. Yeah. So when we talk about self-care, it has to be a full body experience, full body looking and at all four of what levels. You're saying, the beauty of what you're saying, Iyanla, is we are asking people to broaden their ideas of themselves. Yeah. Get to know yourself in a way that actually makes you that 360 degree being where your mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical self are all important. Yeah. And you give time and attention. And, you know, I think that one of the things that uh, Dr. Joy said is, if your, she didn't use these words, but if your peace is disturbed, yes. if you find yourself uncomfortable inside of yourself, whether it's COVID-19 or outside of COVID-19, that's an indicator that it's time to spend some quality time with yourself to learn strategies and, and ways in which you can get in touch with yourself. And there's a ton of resources. And I will say that my my inner fitness workouts that I do on, on Sundays, and yeah. you can go to my website at uh, you know, www.tinalifford.com and find out more about it. But we, we, should, we should be attending to our inner fitness. Yes. The way we tend to our physical fitness. outer fitness. Yeah, but you know, we're, we're not taught to do that. And particularly no, when not. you think that we've been made codependent on somebody else, be it the doctor, the therapist, the preacher, the whoever, to, to make our insides all right. And, you know, I, I have to say, you know, I don't say it out loud much because people, this thing has not bothered me at all. I mean, you know, yeah. it's inconvenient. Because two things that I mastered before COVID got here, number one was trust, and number two was surrender. Yeah. <laughs> and trust I mastered in, those two things. Trust, <laughs> trust in the, the idea that you're not alone in this, that there is yeah. a higher power, and yeah. trust in yourself and your ability to actually navigate it, that we really do have the resources inside to navigate from where we are to where we want to be. That's well, a really important way to begin to trust self. Well, you know, I think it, it goes for me back to a lesson I learned in the Course in Miracles, which is A, God is in everything I see. 
So if I'm looking at this pandemic and I'm saying, okay, God is in this. Now, I don't know what God is doing, but I know what God can do. <laughs> okay. Right. All right. right. But God is in everything I see. Number That's two, it. my mind is one with God's mind. Therefore, my mind is holy. So my first thing was, let me get control of my mind. <laughs> okay. And as Dr. Joy said, staying in the moment. I mean, she gave such beautiful tips. Stay in the moment. You know, create your boundaries. Do your journaling. Ask for what you need. And the thing is, you know, I trust and I got control of my mind and I don't need anything. I've discovered that I have more than I would ever need. Okay, so what's beautiful about that is that anyone who knows you knows that you have consistently poured into yourself. You have made it a priority to get better information and then to practice what you have learned. And so you are a testament. I am a testament because yes. I do. My, my peace is not disturbed by this. And I have great compassion for what's going on. So if in fact you want to be less reactive, then definitely just from today's episode alone, there's work that you can do to be yeah. proactive in that goal. And I think reading your book and really understanding those lies, because I found two lies in there. I said, oh, I didn't even know. I didn't even think about that. So the big lies. Yeah, I, I think that, that that's important. Uh, I enjoy you. I enjoy what you have been bringing to the world for decades. So I know you walk your talk and... I just want to, can I, can I use your deep bow? Can I use your yes, deep bow? Yes, please. Yes. Deep bow, my sister. Yes.